Hey everyone, welcome back to The Boring Life. We are in episode number 5 and this week we are tracking through, I don't remember, I don't even remember the days, April 29th to May 5th. Yay. <laughs> oh man, honestly, I, I swear I've been spending the last few days just asking my friends over and over again, what day is it today? What day is it today? Because I just lose track of what the actual days are like weekends and weekdays are practically the same i just i literally just ask myself am i training today or if i am actually i train six times a week anyway so rather i'll ask myself am i lifting heavy today or is it a cardio day and that's how i just kind of go by my days um but so if you are new to the fit vlog welcome and just a quick overview, the vlog itself is about just kind of showcasing what a week in the life of entrepreneurship really is. And I'm not even a great example because I'm not running some kind of, I don't know, venture funded startup. Uh, it's just me running a solo platform and trying to create this dream of mine into a reality. And so this vlog is just to document the process of really building out OMD Ventures, which is this company that I'm uh, building out and it's kind of the beginning of this 10, 20, 30 year journey that I've kind of set for myself and the process itself is very boring so I decided to call it the boring life because my life according to a lot of my friends is very boring but I hope to show them that in the event or in the process of living this boring life the result can be very shiny and exciting so this is a recap of what's gone on in the past week. So what happened? Um, let's see. I think the big thing is I don't know if I mentioned in the previous vlogs, but I've the new strategy now has been focused on trying to essentially find a job at a startup where I can build out OMD Ventures, but really try to do the permission-based work. So building an OMD Ventures is the permissionless work where I'm doing the podcast, the blog, the newsletter, just everything. And now I want to actually go deeper in and actually build out systems inside organizations. And so I've been straddling with consulting, with, um, with whether I can be a consultant for startups or whether I join one directly to actually build stuff out internally or be an investor. Like different methods have different hurdles, but, um, I'm being very open-minded about everything and the approach then has just been okay let's just, just go out and the focus is let's meet as many people who understand what I'm trying to do or really give a shit about human capital and let's see if I can work out some kind of partnership job like I don't even have a set thing on that either and like I'll be interviewing with people or I'll just be meeting with people and they'll be asking me straight up so are you looking for a job or are you a consultant? And I tell them, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, all, all, that, all, that, that only matters for payment and shit. And if you're going to bitch over about money about things and tell me this position over that, then I don't really care for that. It's whether do I get to do the work I want to do or not. Like, it's just that simple. So on that part, um, I've been meeting a lot of more people and it's been fantastic. And I think I've been talking about the meetings I've been having as well. And so this past week, I would say I've had maybe three leads. Um, not necessarily all three interviews. I think I'll say about two, two I've had an interview this week. And the third one is kind of a lead. And so it's, I'm treating it rather as more of a discussion with the company itself to kind of let them know about what I'm trying to do and trying to understand from their point of view where I can try to kind of create my own role because I just don't fit in anywhere. And so that's just been very interesting. Um, so all three are startups. They are all sub 100. Um, one's not based in Canada and the other two are. So that's just kind of the way it's been. Um, I'm kind of shying away from actually sharing which companies just because these are still kind of out in the open and I feel like I can 
speak more freely about the process I'm kind of going through if I don't really mention them. So we just kind of keep it at that for now. Uh, what else? Oh, I worked at I worked at the WeWork at one university in Toronto, all thanks to my past podcast guest, Ricky Zhang, the Prince of Travel. Um, that was really cool because Ricky being the credit card genius that he is, he has the Amex Platinum, the US version, and apparently if you get that, you have a whole year off. I mean, you get a whole year of WeWork membership for free, and so like it's part of the membership. Of, of, of having the credit card which is so much better than the Amex Platinum in Canada because we don't get any of that but yeah because of that he can bring in guests and so he him and I have been we've been catching up a couple times just because he's a solo printer and I'm a solo printer and we just kind of hit it off just from our chats and so he invited me to come to WeWork and just work with him and so we just had a great work session we just found a, a table and downed a bunch of coffees and did our own work but it's really just cool just to have that kind of community where I have someone else there and I'm, I'm not like working alone which is pretty great to have because this has been a very lonely journey and most of the time I'm just at a coffee shop by myself doing my stuff and there are other people around you but it's it's not the same so because I know what Ricky's going through that it was so much better to actually have that camaraderie to some degree so I really appreciate it and so I think we might try it again um, once he comes back from his current world travels I think he's in somewhere in the Middle East now he's doing a whole Middle East trip for about a month all luxurious of course <laughs> the way he does it he, um, it's great though and so yeah that's that was a really fun time um, ooh I became a so I think last week I got denied from a medium publication called Better Humans, but this time I got accepted as a writer to be on a publication called Be Yourself. It's run by uh, Joel, I'm gonna butcher his last name, but it starts with an M, Joel M. And it's, it's a pretty big publication. It's, I, I wanna say it has more than 300,000 followers. And so I'm, I was very happy that Joel liked my essay uh, it's it's an article that we've published in the past. It's what was it? I think it was the one where I talk about um, a reflection to my my five year my twenty one year old self, so five years back, and he really liked it, and so he said, yeah, he'd be happy to publish it. So that's really cool. And ooh, the Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting was on Saturday. That was phenomenal. It it kind of was the Saturday of all best Saturdays because I had my anniversary with my girlfriend so we hit our seven year mark which is a very long time I think we've been dating more than most people have even been married <laughs> and I kind of looked over at her because she's sitting across from me but I don't think she heard me um, yeah so we had our seven year anniversary and the brochure Cheryl Lumine was on the same day and Star Wars Day is on the same day and so that was kind of a triple whammy. I'm a big Star Wars fan, and but I'm a big, bigger Buffett fan, and I do love my girlfriend, so it was pretty cool. Um, but I did spend practically most of the day at, in a coffee shop just watching the Berkshire Hathaway meeting live, and it's always a treat. I still have to kind of review the full thing. I didn't get to actually watch the full seven hours, only about maybe two to three hours. Um, so I do want to review the full meeting again and I should take notes on it so that'll be another fun activity I'm looking forward to and so something new this month and so we kind of uh, hit upon the first week of May and I'm doing this thing where I do a, ha a habit of the month and I pick one habit to do every day as a, as part of my system and so last last month was last month was trying to do morning pages so every morning writing 750 words is brain dumping not that hard and I was able to do it successfully I think I made it miss one day but this month I chose something hard <sighs> hard for me uh, it's to not eat any pastries and my friends know that I love pastries that is my kryptonite just just gave me a good butter croissant and man I got like those Costco butter croissants I I will down easily two to three of those bad boys in one sitting 
and I'll eat that with a plate of eggs and a plate of bacon. And so, yeah, it's a, that's a, it's a tough one for me, but you know, I, I wanted to watch my weight. Uh, it, it's just so obvious because my diet is very relatively strict. I, I eat the same thing in the, for lunch and my dinners are pretty kind of meal prepped out. So I also kind of relatively same thing for dinner as well. So the days I have pastries and the days I don't, I can definitely feel a difference in terms of just my ability at the gym performance wise, um, my cognitive function, like I just get so much, I just get so sluggish when I have pastries. So it, all in all is bad for me, I know it. Um, I can definitely see weight gain every, if I have maybe three, four days of just having a scone every single day. So that's, that's the habit of the month. So far, I haven't had, had it at all. So I've been pretty good. So the last week I've been pretty good. The Saturday I had ice cream, but that's not a pastry. And I don't really have ice cream often, but it was my anniversary, anniversary date. And so we got ice cream. Exceptions gotta be made sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the habit of the month and that's something I really want to continue to work on and who knows, maybe I'll continue doing it. Like right now I continue to do morning pages every morning. Um, or maybe I'll love pastries way too much and after this month I'll be like, fuck it, I just gotta go back to eating croissants just cause I gotta live my life. And so now kind of going through the kind of boring system that I have. <laughs> so what happened? Mm, on, so I generally go through my systems of being wise, wealthy and healthy. So the system to be wise, mainly focused on, I guess, reading. I finished reading the Tony Robbins book on um, Awakening the Giant Within. Overall, meh. It's, it's very long. And it, I guess if you've never read any kind of like self-development book, I think it's if you started with it, then it could, might add a lot of value. But I am one of those losers that's read a lot of those kinds of books and so nothing it's nothing new. Maybe they pulled it out from his book, so maybe. But overall I was like, yeah, it's okay. It's very salesy. It's it was overly salesy. I didn't enjoy the tone at all. So I'm back to reading Maverick by Ricardo Semler. So it's still enjoying it, I'm having a lot of fun and that continues. I think I've read probably not that much this week. Um for Maverick, I've read maybe about 30, 40 pages. So, gotta up that reading game for sure. If I wanna continue to get on that marker of uh, reading two books a month, 24 in the year. And in terms of being wealthy, um, Medium continues to pay me bit by bit with my articles. So, that's been very helpful. I think I made a solid $7 this week. So, I honestly, it's, I think, uh, I think most of my money just comes from two articles like i had two big articles that just kind of hit it big they got carried and hundreds of people are reading it and clapping for it so i'm just living off of that <laughs> so that's been really sick it's been really cool um and it's definitely been a bigger motivator to do more of that as well and republish all my weekly articles on medium and adding to that the the essay the article for this week is titled Entrepreneurs are risk averse and employees are risk takers. It's the point of view on risk and how people get it wrong with their career. Everyone thinks that being an employee is the risk averse thing and being an entrepreneur is a risk taker, but I write an essay on why that's actually the reverse. And so if that does kind of trigger you or get you excited, definitely check it out on the blog. And the podcast episode uh, we, that went out this week was with Megan Tong, so episode number 40. Uh, and Megan Tong is the co-founder of Kanga Aussie Meat Pies. It's a meat pie shop here in Toronto and I've been a big fan of their meat pies even before I knew it was run by Megan who is a fellow Waterloo alum from the accounting program. But I I know what meat pies once were until I tried Kanga and I was like, oh, this is fucking amazing. And then it turns out Megan is the, the co-founder is an alum from Waterloo and also a KPMG alum and also a Deloitte alum. So I thought, perfect, I'm going to talk to her. And so we kind of go through the whole kind of shebang on how she created the restaurant franchise, the whole experience, launching it, running it, and then selling it. And then a whole bunch of other things so that's part of her journey, like microfinance and like real estate investing. And she's just, re she's just really chill person to chat with. And so I think 
um, you might actually enjoy it. Uh, if you have any interest in microfinance, running restaurants, entrepreneurship in general, and even like real estate investing. So definitely tune in on that. In terms of being healthy, um, I think overall the diet, my overall diet has been pretty good. Like not eating pastries has really been nothing helpful. Um, cutting back on the sugar for sure. Solid training week, train four times a week. Um, cardio only once a week. I missed one of the cardio days. So that also means I've only done sauna once once a week. So it might have impacted my recovery a little, but I didn't feel it too bad in the gym. Um, I had beer on Friday. Oof. I usually only have alcohol maybe on average, I think once a month. And so this is kind of that period. But I don't know. I'm kind of lately been craving beer more often. Maybe it's the stress from work. I'm not sure. But overall, um, fasting's been good. Like average 16.6 hours uh, on a daily basis. And I only missed, uh, I think I only missed Sunday um, because I was. Like I ate until really late at night because my anniversary was on a Saturday, so we had like dessert and just, you know, just snacking and shit. So I ended up missing the fasting window on Sunday, even though I still fasted for about 14 hours. Not bad. And I think a big thing that has been um, sleep. My sleep's not been very good. Um, you might be wondering, oh, why does he have these weird orange glasses? And these dorky glasses are glasses to help block out blue light and so it helps with melatonin uh, reproduction so that I should get drowsy and sleepy though I actually don't have any problems with actually getting drowsy and sleepy because lately I haven't been sleeping too well I think I'm averaging between six to seven hours um, a night but I wake up just super tired and so I, that's something I really do have to work on com and be cognizant of so yeah trying to focus on that that's definitely a big focus aside from not eating pastries but yeah that's practically been the week so far i hope i didn't bore you too much and there you know there are some lights of excitingness in my life but yeah that's practically it so thanks again for tuning in and stick around you get to watch my weekly log of exercises so maybe it'll inspire you maybe it'll show you how stronger you are compared to me or yeah maybe you can even look at my form and be like oh maybe you can learn something from that who knows but yeah thanks for tuning in and now uh, bye bye take care